Hey guys, welcome to the next video in this channel. Today, it's my birthday. It's August 30. I'm actually recording this one day before, of course, because I'm going to be spending the day with my family. But right now, we're going to be looking at some very, very cool stuff. So I have, uh, I would say, one very cool technique that I want to show you in regards to 3D. And then at the end of the video, I have a very, very cool surprise, something that a lot of you have been asking for. So let's go. Um, I'm going to give you, it's actually two tips right here, um, so it's a, it's a two for one. Um, I'm going to give you one of the best tips someone ever gave me when I was about to graduate from, uh, from my school years. Uh, when we were working on our portfolio pieces, on the things that we were going to present as our final portfolio, one of our teachers told us that one of the best things you can do as a 3D artist is to, to always have a top-notch portfolio, save time, and be able to present the skills that you now possess is to update things that you did way back in your days as an artist and, and see if you can make them better with the new uh, techniques and skills that you've learned throughout the years. So this one right here, this was my project for one of the classes that I took a long time ago. Uh, it was 2014, so it's uh, almost seven years ago. As you can see, it looks green because it's actually using Mentor Ray Notes, which was a, a render engine that Maya had back in the day. Nowadays, it doesn't have it, so it's not supporting it. So I'm just going to assign an existing material. Let's do like Lambert. And that's this guy. It's a, it's a knight that I, I think I designed this. I, I don't think I, I don't think I followed the concept. I don't remember. Let me check. Oh, yeah, I did follow a concept. So there was this was a concept. So this was a concept by the vampire, the, the vampire Dio. Um, probably from Deviant Art or something. Eric09 was the, the concept. So uh, I didn't follow it like to the T, but I did go or, or try to make this as close as possible. So you can see a lot of the things uh, in here. But for instance, one of the things that I really didn't like back then was a helmet. Uh, because the, the character here, the concept that I was trying to follow, had a very cool helmet, but at that time I, I just didn't have the skills to, to get that done. So um, I did this helmet, which is, I wouldn't say it's not bad, but it's not perfect either. And uh, and this is what we're going to be working on. We're going to be taking this helmet into ZBrush and we're going to give it a new life. We're going to make it way, way better. So I'm going to go here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say file, export selection, and let's export this to our uh, project. So let's go into assets. Let's create a new folder called helmet. And let's call this helmet. There we go. I'm going to create a new scene. Not, I don't want to save anything. Just keep that in there. File. And I'm going to import exactly what I just uh, what I just exported. So next to live. Uh, assets. Helmet. There we go. So here's the helmet. Now, a couple of things I want to do before we jump into Seabrush. Uh, first, you can see that the normals here are um, reversed. So I'm just going to... So like those things and say mesh display and reverse. There we go. It, I believe it does have UBs. I believe we did do you. Oh no, it has no UBs. Oh my God. We're going to do UBs as well. So uh, that, that's one of the things that I want to show you. So we're, we're going to keep this right here. And I want to exaggerate a couple of the things that this element has. So uh, what I want is I want this to look a little bit more kind of like Warcraft-ish. So it's going to have more of a, of a thicker um approach to it and a very qu quick way to do this is uh to just extrude the whole thing just push it slightly up it is gonna like inflate a little bit which is fine and then on the inside you're gonna see that we have uh, another like island of faces we're just gonna leave that one and we're gonna get this now we do need a couple more support edges because this is a little bit too round so i'm gonna go into my insert edge loop right here we're going to insert an edge loop here and here. That makes it look way better. Um, here's, a, here's a cool trick for you guys. So let's say we want to keep our topology clean and we want to add one line here so that we have this very sharp corner on this area, right? But we don't want to have this line going all the way down here because it's going to make the, the circular part of this thing look a little bit weird. So what we do here is we use our cut tool. I believe we did this with the, with the Firefly uh, element like this and that's gonna hold the edge a little bit better right now i don't think we really need it i'm just i'm just giving you that thing if, if in case you want to do it so here we have this cross let me center the pivot point let's bring it forward and we definitely want to make it nicer now i can see all of the edge loops that we have there i mean this, this is not bad though so probably just 
If I extrude it, it's just gonna look very weird. Let's try it. Let's try just an extrusion. Oh yeah, it worked nice, so that's fine. Okay, so same thing, just select everything, delete all of the interfaces, and there we go. And this one, this one's a piece that I definitely wanna push forward. Now, I, I can definitely say that the topology for this helmet is not perfect. I remember back in the day, this was actually like my Maya class uh, final. So there's a lot of things that are not <laughs> the way they're supposed to be. Um, so you're gonna have to excuse that, but that doesn't mean that we can't create something very cool out of this and, and just like update it. So one thing I'm definitely gonna do here is I'm gonna add a support edge as well. So let's do one right here and probably one on the back here. That's gonna keep it tighter. You can see it's now has a sharper look. There we go. Now, for instance, here, I'll definitely want one here. It's also gonna keep it sharper. But I, I don't like those weird, like, crunches, crunchy things that it has there. I'm not sure what it is. I mean, it's, it's not bad, it looks interesting. It's just, it, it, it looks kind of weird, so. It's gonna have one here, one here, one support that's here, and one support that's here. There we go. So that's looking nice. Probably add one more support edge inside here and here. Again, it's gonna help me get a, a sharper look. And uh, finally, I think we can get away with one here. And uh, it looks like we do have one there. So let's just add it again. And this one, let's delete it. There we go. And yeah, so, so we have an updated helmet here, which we're gonna be uh, modifying in Seaverse as well, don't worry. Uh, but now it looks a little bit better than what it did. Now, if we want to make sure that everything is symmetrical and clean, one thing we can do is we can do a quick mirror here. I'm gonna go from world X positive, so that everything that we have on this side, which is the thing that looks nice, looks good on this side as well. There we go. Uh, everything else seems to be working as expected. And, but one thing I'm definitely gonna do is, this is way too little resolution. I remember, again, back in the day, we were told to always try and model things in an optimized way. Today, or in, in, in our times now, with the, all the CPU power that we have, it's, it's not really necessary to be super optimized. So I'm gonna go mesh and just smooth this thing. This looks a little bit better, closer to what we would do nowadays. So yeah, that looks good. I mean, that overlap right there, it looks interesting, it looks, Kind of weird, it's like it's some sort of like arrows and stuff. Um, again, I'm, I'm not against it, so so let's just go with this. So I'm gonna grab all of this, guys, all of this uh, element, and I'm gonna combine it into a single object. Delay history, first transformation, center pivot, just so that it's easier to, to manage. And I'm just gonna grab the whole thing, file, export selection, and let's export this as helmet underscore B2. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this into ZBrush. But before that, having UBs would really help me with the technique that I wanna show you. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do quick UBs for this thing. So I'm gonna go into UV. I'm gonna do a planar mapping just to get something in there very quickly. And then I'm gonna use my UB 3D cut and sew UB tool to start cutting the UBs. Now you can do it face by face. For instance, all of this section, which is kind of like a head, it's very easy to UB because we're just gonna go through all of the inner edges like Let's go UV, 3D cut. Let's go edge mode and then UV, 3D cut, there we go. So we're gonna go like all the way here. So you can see it goes pretty much all the way around the whole helmet. So we're gonna have the like the outer part and the inner part. Now to help this thing be a little bit more relaxed, we can cut right here on this like border. Borders of hard surface things are always super good because they're gonna allow us to um, to relax things a little bit better. So I know that that piece is gonna unfold nicely. Let's go for the front here. Let's go into edge mode again, UV, 3D cut, and again. Uh, you can go to the inner edge, like this one right here, or you can go to this middle edge. Both of them are fine. I usually prefer going to this uh, middle edge because it's easier to blend it there than to bring on the border. If you have your UV on the borders, sometimes when you use the textures such as the, or the generators such as the metal edge wear, you get some weird results. So that's why I prefer to do it this way. And since this is pretty much a flat thing, as you can see here, by doing this, it's pretty much gonna work as, as intended. Um, then this thing right here, and the cross, let's go into edge again. Same deal with the cross, it's just a flat surface or flat object, so just a cut through the middle should be fine. 
same for this guy cut through the middle and cut through the middle on the inside here so that you get like two perfectly flat surfaces uh, describing the form and then the little spheres oh i actually was smart enough to make them into some sort of like cylinders i deleted the interfaces back back in the day so yeah that's that's gonna work just perfect so now what i just need to do is we're gonna go uv uv editor we're gonna grab the whole thing unfold and unfold and if we did our proper cuts as you can see here everything is looking good grab all of the shells i'm gonna go into tools sorry modify um layout right here and just layout and there we go not perfect but good enough now the technique that i want to show you requires us to have a cleaner look here so i'm gonna i'm gonna play a little bit of tetris in this uh thing and we're gonna uh it, it, the, the proportion is fine we're just gonna rotate this thing so it's a little bit easier to work with so i'm gonna make sure that it's as straight as possible that seems very straight which is perfect let's go here now i just want to know if that's the that that's the outer side so that's the most important side of the of the helmet so i'm just gonna place it right about there and then i'm just gonna rotate this guy this one it is important but not as important as that one and then uh, the helmet, I don't really care that much about. I'm not going to add any of the details that I want to show you on the helmet. So I'm just going to try and find a good place for these things. I mean, it might not be a bad idea to... I think this is the outer edge, yeah. Might not be a bad idea to keep it clean as well. So again, I'm going to try to keep this as straight as possible. There we go. Let's move these things around a little bit. Remember, we always want things to be inside of the of the square, of the UV square. We don't want anything touching each other or any other weird things. That's fine there. And these guys, those are fine. Again, I don't think I'm gonna add any like specific details to these guys. So I'm just gonna position them here. Usually you want things to be straight or as straight as possible if you're using patterns. So for instance, if you're doing something that's made out of wood, uh, and you're going to have the lines of the wood, uh, it's easier when things are all facing one way or the other. Uh, otherwise, you, you can get some weird... It, it might be difficult to, to make sure that everything fits properly. Let's see. It's going to have to be a little bit here. Let me see if this is the back face. Yeah, so see, since this is the back face, as you can see, this is the, the back part of the, of the thing. We're not going to see it as much. I can actually make it slightly smaller. It's not going to affect the resolution that much, and uh, we get a cleaner result here. So the reason why I want this is because I actually want to take this snapshot into uh, Photoshop because one of the things that you've probably seen in the in like all like helmets and stuff is all that crazy decoration, right? Like there's a lot of crazy decoration that the helmets used to have. Um, ba -ba -ba, let me see if we can find an example. Like most of these are very simple, but you can see like this. Like those sort of like things or probably not medieval. I think it's uh, let's go real and let's see if there's yeah like like all of that thing like all of those leaves and stuff that were very very cool looking. Trying to model those in ZBrush by hand it's really difficult. So what I'm gonna show you is a technique that will allow us to create that in a very easy way. So I'm gonna grab this thing. I'm gonna go UV UV editor. I'm going to go into image and I'm going to say UV snapshot. I'm going to save this snapshot in our folder. So let's go next to live. Let's go into our um, images. And let's call this uh, helmet UV snapshot. I'm going to save this as a PNG, very important PNG because we want transparency. And I'm going to hit uh, apply. Apply and close. Uh, overwrite. There we go. Now, we export this file, export selection. Let's just overwrite that one, it's fine. And we're gonna open two things. I'm gonna open Photoshop, and I'm gonna open ZBrush. <laughs> How's your weekend, guys? Hopefully everything was good and you were able to do some 3D work. Remember, one of the advices that I always give people is practice. Just practice. Try to do something every single day. Learn a new skill, learn a new tool, learn a new shortcut. Whatever works for you so that you can keep increasing your 3D level. That's, that's always, always good. So I'm going to go here in ZBrush. I'm going to say import. We are going to jump into our uh, project here. We have our helmet. 
since it's an FBX, it's going to ask if we want to import other sort of things. I'm just going to say, OK, it's fine. And there we go. Now, one of the great things about this helmet is, of course, we can divide it a couple of times to get more resolution. And we can start sculpting. Like, if we just go with, like, a clay buildup. Where's my pen? Oh, there he is. I can just start sculpting, you know, or trim dynamic even. Just, like, giving this sort of, like, batter uh, look to it. Some dance here and there, here, here. So you know, like that. That immediately is going to start giving this helmet a lot more life than what we had before. I mean, I can add a little bit of volume with the like the clay buildup, and then smooth it out. And as you can see, it's going to look very cool because it's going to look like the metal was actually like hand the uh, hand place and hand made into into this sort of effect, into this sort of shape and form. So there we go. But that's not the technique that I want to show you in this video. In this video, what I want to show you is the following. I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to open my uh, fire, my file, the, the PNG file that we have here. So here we go. And this is a PNG image and it's just a map. It's the UV map that we have. So I'm going to fill the lower layer with black. And at this part right here is the one that's most important to me because I'm going to be designing all of the decoration and things that I want using this as a template. So I'm going to look for here, I'm going to say medieval decals. And these are all of the like symbols and, and squiggly lines and things that they used in the medieval times that we can incorporate into our things. For instance, this guy looks great. So I'm just going to copy this. Let's go here. I'm going to paste it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this thing lands where I want this thing to land. So I would say something like this. Like this actually follows the shape of our helmet pretty nicely, I would say. It's kind of if, if, it's, if it was made for, for us. So we're going to go right there. It doesn't matter if it's not completely perfect because back in the day, like symmetry is, was very difficult to achieve. So even having a little bit of variation there is great. And then let's go for, I don't remember how this thing is called, medieval uh, decorations, I think it's called. No, medieval patterns. I think it's patterns. Yeah, yeah, this is what, what I'm talking about. This sort of things. So, yeah, like all of these elements. So, let's say, or, hmm, is there another way to call this? Medieval logos? No, not really. Medieval... Uh, armor. Let's see if we can find it. Armor detail. See that that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Those sort of like decorations. So medieval. I think it is pattern. So let's go for patterns. Now let's look for a cool pattern. Yeah, it's like this sort of stuff, right? So let's go for like a pattern that looks cool. Uh, I think the one, this one is fine. It's a nice one. It's not super intense, but it's cool. So I'm just going to copy this image, bring it into Photoshop, Control-B, Control-I to invert, invert it. Now you can see that there is a watermark, of course. Uh, usually, if this was a production work, I would buy the, the thing just to make sure that everything is uh, clean and, and accounted for. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Select, Color Range. I'm going to select the whites. Hit OK. Actually, let's turn this off. So select color range, select the whites, hit OK, and then Control Invert, or sorry, Control Shift I to invert, and then delete everything else, and then we're just gonna be left with this. So that can get rid of the watermark, uh, kind of easy. So I'm just gonna grab these two guys and then duplicate them a couple times to create a pattern. Then let's grab all of this four, Oop. all four of them. We grab two of them, we multiply, or sorry, oh my god, just bring this back. There we go, there we go. I'm going to just hit Control E to combine all of them into a single, into a single uh, image. And then I'm going to scale it down because it's a little bit too big. So something like this, Oop. and then just duplicate. Again, duplicate again. 
grab all four of them, control E. And there we go. So now if we turn on our, um, our grid here again, we can just position our, our pattern on top of this thing. Make sure it's as the line as possible. And uh, I'm definitely gonna clean a little bit here. So what I can do is I can grab the logo. I'm gonna turn this off for a second and turn this off, make this bigger. So I wanna have like a nice little border around this thing that kind of like gets the other things out. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna select the, um, with my, again, with select, select color range and just select that white. There we go. So now we have that selection. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go into select, modify, expand. Let's expand by like 10 pixels. There we go. And now on the on this one right here, we're gonna create the mask. And then I'm gonna press control I to invert the mask. And now, as you can see, we're gonna have this very nice thing going around the whole thing, around the whole uh, pattern. And there's a little bit of a, of a distance, like a separation from the from the main thing. Now, I don't want this heraldry to go or this like sort of detail to go everywhere on the on the thing. So on this mask, because I don't want to erase it either, I'm gonna use my my uh, black brush, and I'm especially gonna get rid of it on the like on the borders here of the of the mask. So I wanna I wanna keep those clean. Now imagine trying to do this by hand in, in ZBrush. It will take you forever, right? Because you will need to draw every single thing and it will be pretty much impossible. So some of you might be wondering, well, how is he gonna how is he gonna project this into the into the thing? Well there's uh, there's several ways to do it. I'm gonna show you one that I think is very cool. This trick I, I didn't invent it of course. I found it like several years ago. And every time they ask me to do this sort of thing. It has come pretty handy. Not only for this, I've actually done this for like uh, like creatures when when they have like very complicated scales and stuff, like dragons and uh, and reptiles. Uh, this one works wonders as well because you can just assign the scales in in black and white, and then just project it onto the thing. So just make sure there's nothing anywhere else. There we go. I'm gonna turn off the grid here, and I'm gonna save this image as a um, new Photoshop makes you do something weird. I'm gonna save that as a, probably a JPEG, JPEG is fine. And there's gonna be a little bit of art artifacts, but since this is like an old helmet, it's fine if it's not perfect. And I'm gonna call this helmet details. Now here comes the fun part. This is all preparation for the actual trick, which is gonna be really fast. It's a, it's a very fast tool here inside of uh, us here. In Zbrush. So I'm gonna go into texture map and I'm gonna load in a texture. So I'm gonna import and we're gonna import the helmet details. I'm gonna hit open. And you're gonna see that it's not matching. The reason it's not matching is because every time you import a texture in Zbrush, for some reason, I'm not sure why, it flips it. So I'm gonna go into texture and I'm just gonna select the texture, which is, uh, where is it? Texture. Oh, let's import the texture again here. And here on the textures, we're gonna select the texture and flip it. And then on here, we're just gonna select this one right here. There we go. So now, as you can see, we have this black and white mask that's hitting all of the important parts of our helmet exactly the way we want it. Even the cross looks amazing, right? Like it looks a very, very cool. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to masking and I'm gonna say mask by color. And I'm gonna say mask by intensity. So all of the things that are black are gonna be masked. If I go back into texture map and I turn it off, you're gonna see that we have this. Look at that, very cool mask. Now, of course, we definitely need a couple more uh, geometry. So let's divide it a couple more times. Let's go like crazy. Let's go like 11 million. And I'm gonna go um, again, polypaint. And I'm gonna say, no, sorry, uh, masking. Mask by intensity. And now if we go, we go into texture and turn off the texture, you're gonna see that we have this. Now, since all of these things are selected and those are the ones, the things that I want to modify, I'm just gonna go into um, the deformation panel and we can use the simple inflate to just bring them out like this. And when you take the mask away, look at that. 
easy, very high frequency detail done right. Now, of course, if we were to have a cleaner mask, uh, we, will, we will be able to do this in a better way. Uh, remember the new one that we talked about, the, the adjust last? Let me see if it works here. No, it doesn't because it's not a stroke. That's a, that's a shame. I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna go into the inflate. Let me, let me go back. One thing we can definitely do is I can go into, let's go into the texture map, turn it off. I can go into the masking options and just blur the mask a little bit. Let's see if we lose a lot of detail. Uh, yeah, that's quite a bit of detail loss. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. We can control and click. Something that's a little bit better. Yeah, that, see, that's that's a little bit better. That that blur was uh, works a little bit nicer, I think. Uh, just control and click the mask, and then again, we're gonna go into the deformation uh, tab. And on the inflate, we're gonna inflate it slightly. Like that. Now imagine using, of course, all of the techniques that we have in Substance Painter, for instance, to fill in all of those little cavities with a little bit of rust, a little bit of grime, and, uh, and yeah, so you're gonna have a very, very cool effect. So I'm gonna stop the video right here, guys. We've already gone long enough and hopefully you understand where we're going with this. Now, I'm gonna finish this helmet. This is not the end of it because this helmet already has, um, what's the word? It already has UVs and everything, so it might be a very good idea to actually just bring it into Substance, finish it, get a nice render and, and complete what I told you before, like grab something from the past and, and make it better. I do think it was looking a little bit better without the, the smooth here. So I am, we can try to inflate balloon, but it's a little bit too, too strong. So I'm just gonna say like inflate of one. Uh, let's try inflate of three. Uh, three, it's a little bit too much. So let's try an inflate of two. There we go, that looks way, way better. So I'm gonna be taking this and this is gonna be my high poly. Now, of course you can use this detail and bring it everywhere else. I'm just gonna do a quick sculpt off camera on this uh, helmet, just uh, play around with everything to make sure that we have a nice sculpture. And on the next one, we're gonna explore how to bring this into substance, do a quick paint job there to make sure it looks good and that's it. But before we leave, before we leave and before this video becomes a 40 minute video, uh, there's a big surprise that I mentioned at the beginning that uh, I wanted to share with you. It's just. Again, just a sneak peek of what we're gonna be able to do. So, you probably saw it because I made the mistake of not changing the project here inside of Maya, but I'm already working on the next to it rigging introduction. So, we're gonna have a rigging course. It's gonna be up very, very soon. I'm, I'm, I'm saying in a good progress right now with it, so hopefully it will be up in the next couple of weeks. And uh, this is a rigging introduction course that you guys are gonna be able to um, to buy from our premium side of things. And uh, we're gonna be covering everything from the very basic things about rigging all the way to creating a rig for a character that we can use in games and stuff. So I wanna show you, because you know, it's always show and tell, right? So I wanna show you one of the things that we're gonna be doing, which I have over here, I think. See if I can find it. Remember where? It, oh, I, I remember now where it is. Ba -ba -da -ba -bam. Yeah. Here we go. So this, my friends, is a character that I created. If you've seen my old portfolio video where I show you the portfolio process, you probably saw it. Uh, and this was a concept that I created uh, ooh, a long time ago. And now I made it into a model. It's called the Shanbi Mara, and uh, it's this very cool uh, rock dude. So in the course, we're gonna be able, I'm gonna show you how to rig this for games. And now I, I wanna show you the animations that we have for this guy because they're really, really cool. For instance, uh, where is it? Here, here, nope. Here. I, I really like the, the attack animation. Oh, let's, let, let's do the walk first. So for instance, this is the walk animation. Okay, now this is not an animation course, but I just wanna show you what, what, what you're gonna be able to do with your rigs so that later on, if you want to animate them, uh, you're gonna be able to create some very cool things. This is the, the attack animation that we did. Wow. wow, very simple attack animation, but it gets the job done. If you see it in game, uh, we, we actually like deploy this in the, in the Unreal um, Engine and it looks very, very nice. Uh, I think we even have like a dead animation here. 
Oh no, that one's not finished. We have a, a spawn animation, which is very cool. I really like that one. There we go. So this is uh, a couple of the things that you're going to be able to create once you finish the rigging uh, course that we're preparing. You're going to be able to rig your own creatures and get them ready for engine so that you can create your own games, your applications, your experiences, anything that you want. So that's the big surprise, guys. Hopefully you're uh, as excited as I am about this new course. This is one of the things that you guys have been asking. I've been reading all of your comments. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for all the support throughout. It's been almost two months of... Uh, pretty much kind of daily uh, content for us. So we're going to keep this going. Uh, I know you guys love it and I, I love doing it too. So make sure to leave in the comments what else you want to do. I have hard surface for ZBrush pending. We have some cloth things that you guys want to see in ZBrush. I'm going to be showing you X-Gen. Some of you want to see a little bit of x -Gen as well. I'm studying other things that I'm not proficient at just yet that I'm going to be uh, showing you as well. We're going to do more projects. I want to do, I think I'm going to do a bicycle or something because I think that's a, a nice exercise and it uh, connects with one of the things that we did in the last week. So there's a lot of things going. We're still working on more premium courses for you. And hopefully this uh, whole journey has been uh, very, very cool for you as well, guys. So thank you. Thank you very much for everything. And I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.